Buckle up because Adobe Firefly 3 is finally here and it was worth the wait. In the next 13 minutes, I'm going to show you why this thing is an actual game changer for creators. And best of all, it's freely available to everyone right now. In today's video, we'll unpack the new features and user interface improvements which make Adobe Firefly 3 a major milestone in the product's development. We'll take a look at how the image generation model Firefly 3 compares against other state-of-the-art image generation models, mid-journey and stable diffusion. Then finally, we'll unpack structure reference to see how Adobe Maybe Firefly 3 finally gives creators total control over their compositions. But before we get into all of that, I wanted to give you a quick rundown of something I think we've all been expecting Adobe to excel at, and that's photorealistic stock imagery. For our first example, we're going to take a look at some styled dynamic food photography in the form of this coffee. The splash is super, super realistic looking. The resolution is ultra crisp. There's nothing wrong or unsymmetrical looking about the glass. There's nothing out of shape about the beans. This is a major triumph for Adobe. When it comes to landscape images here, we've got some examples of an oasis in the desert with palm trees and water. I think we can already tell the reflections are looking extremely convincing. Maybe at really close inspection, it starts to fall apart, but at a glance, the stuff is really, really beautiful. The overall color composition of the images are truly excellent as well. Lastly, here's an example of some portrait photography. There's really sharp, clear crystal detail around each of the sequins. Each strand of hair looks convincing and beautiful. This is a really, you know, I think Adobe Firefly 3 has come of age. All right, let's dive into the new features and user interface. This section's gonna cover a lot of really important ground, so you'll wanna pay close attention. Unlike a lot of the other Adobe Suite tools, Firefly is not a downloadable piece of software. It's a web-based platform. So the first thing you'll wanna do is go to your favorite search engine and search for the keyword Adobe Firefly and click on the first results in the search. This will take you to the Adobe Firefly landing page where you'll be greeted with the Get Creative with Adobe Firefly heading. Click on the Generate button. This will take you through to the Adobe Firefly user interface. There's a huge number of options on the Adobe Firefly web platform, but don't worry, we'll unpack each one of them. Each of them is important and gives you different layers of creative control over your image generation. The first option you'll see on the top left is the general settings. Here you can select the image model you want to use. The default should be on Firefly 3 in brackets preview. It's still in the preview. And the second option is Firefly Image 2. Don't waste your time with Firefly 2. It's massively outdated at this point. Under the content type heading, you will see that there are three options, art, photo, and auto. As the buttons would suggest, it allows you to control the type of output you're getting. If you want something that looks like a painting or a render or something that's an art form, you'll select art. If you want something that's photo real, looking like cinema or still photography, you'll select photo. Under the structure heading, you'll see there's an option to upload an image or to browse a gallery of images. This is an incredibly powerful piece of technology, which seems to be based on the open source control net technology. But don't worry, we'll cover that in detail in section three of this video. Style reference is the second image upload option. And much like structure reference, it's an incredibly powerful tool. It operates similarly to the open source IP adapter, which means it gives you control over the color composition, geometry, as well as other stylistic elements, for example, brush strokes. Under the effects tab, you'll see that there's a huge number of options, and this is where it can get a little bit overwhelmed. It's easiest to, to lump these different options into the five basic categories that Adobe has provided. We've got movements, themes, techniques, effects, materials and concepts. I'll leave it to you to go through all of these as I'm sure there will be more added later on. Color and tone is exactly what it says on the tin. It allows you to control the colors and tonality of your image generation. The lighting options give you control over the mood and can unlock some awesome photographic techniques like multi-exposure, surreal lighting or even long time exposure photography. The camera angle drop down menu gives you access to some pretty awesome perspective controls. Um, it's very, very useful. And it seems to be based on the LoRa technology, 
which stands for low rank adapter. Last but not least, there's the prompt window. This is where you enter the textual prompt that you might be used to doing in mid journey or stable diffusion. This example here, we've got a beautiful cozy fantasy stone cottage in a spring forest aside a cobblestone path, blah, blah, blah. You'll also notice that if you've selected some of those options from the user interface that we've already covered, that they will be tagged and appended in your textual prompt window. This is pretty useful and I think it's a major step forward in user friendliness. This is where the rubber hits the road. We're going to be taking a look at some real life performance of Adobe Firefly 3 versus Stable Diffusion and Mid Journey. We'll look at how they compare in visual interest, prompt adherence and realism which in our case means absence of really obvious errors like too many fingers. Our first example here is from Mid Journey, a double exposure of a creative genius. Now Mid Journey always delights when it comes to the overall visual interest of these compositions. These things really hit the mark. We've got some beautiful silhouette control, double exposure landscape sections of these images are also beautiful, vivid in color and vibrant in saturation. Stable Diffusion, in this case, in the form of Dream Shaper XL Turbo, is also going to perform quite well on the prompt double exposure of a creative genius. Here we've got a lot of visual interest again, there's a lot of details happening and it even threw in some uh, really nice stylistic options in the form of a black and white highly grainy image. There's a lot to be said in this thing's favour. Alright, Firefly 3, how did you do? A double exposure of a creative genius. Our images here are quite stocky looking but at least they are vivid, vibrant and saturated in their colours. Although looking at our top right guy over there, I think we can already notice that there's some eye wonkiness going on. There might need to be some fine tuned parameters that Adobe can check out to help fix those common errors in much in the same way that Mid Journey has done. But overall, I mean, depending on what you're going for, this is really not bad. Mid Journey's up again. We're going with a very simple prompt, a creative genius. Mid Journey excels as it always does when it comes to visual interest and overall composition. A lot of beautiful detail happening here. Very few problems in terms of eyes, ears, that type of thing that we would see in previous generations, even last year. Up next is Stable Diffusion again with a creative genius. Maybe a little stereotypical in its presentation here. Everybody's hair is a little bit greasy. Um, I know plenty of creatives in my life and they don't nearly look as rough as these guys do, but we are noticing some really bad wonkiness going on with bottom left guy over there. He's got way too many fingers, um, something that obviously we could fix if we wanted to, but probably better to just generate another one. Overall, these images are not bad. There's a lot of beautiful detail happening. Up next is Adobe Firefly with a very simple text prompt, a creative genius. It comes up with something super generic in terms of style. It looks very clip arty for that matter, but it's doing some interesting things, at least when it comes to text, better than what we saw since the days of Stable Diffusion 1.5. It's definitely on par at least with Stable Diffusion X. XL. Now we're going to go with something a little product oriented, more photorealistic. A bottle of Johnny Walker on a reflective mirror with dark lighting in a studio. Mid Journey of course always impresses when it comes to these stylistic options. Beautiful color, beautiful composition, really really impressive mirrored reflection results and even the fine little dust particles that you would expect in studio photography. Now it's Stable Diffusion's turn to come up with something, a bottle of Johnny Walker on a reflective mirror with dark studio lighting. Very impressive results also from Stable Diffusion. Very nice colors, very, very good prompt adherence. We've got some really convincing looking bottles. Even the labels are starting to look very realistic. I'm very impressed. This is where Adobe Firefly really comes into its own. A bottle of Johnny Walker on a reflective mirror with dark studio lighting. Taking a look at these images, very high resolution, very crisp straight line geometry where you'd expect it to be, very beautiful light play. And what's really nice about this, in my opinion at least, is that it's not trying to replicate these branded products. It's giving you really good baseline renders that you can take over into Photoshop or Adobe Illustrator or whatever else you'd like and give it the tweaks and final touches that you'd want. It doesn't give you a final result, but it gives you a perfect platform on which to build. Structure reference. This is the real game changer for creators. Structure reference gives you the ability to control your compositions like never before. 
To access structure reference, what you do is you simply click on upload an image or you can select from the gallery of provided options. I wouldn't really bother with that unless you wanted to sort of get a feel for how it works. What is important to note when you click on upload a structure reference that it helps you match a particular outline and the depth of the image. This is a dead giveaway that it's based on control net from the open source community. If you're an experienced open source or stable diffusion user, you'll recognize control net and what it can do. Here we've got an example of the outline that control net can generate. That's called a canny edge. And then at the bottom there, you can see an example of a depth map that control net can give you. It seems at least that Adobe Firefly is doing the same thing behind the scenes. To demonstrate how this works, we're going to keep our prompt very simple. We'll start by generating a baseline image that we will use as our structure reference. A portrait of a beautiful woman, 20 years old. After your image has been generated, you can hover your mouse over the image and a drop down menu will appear under edit in the top left of that picture. Click on edit and you will be greeted with a whole bunch of more options. The option you want to click on is use as structure reference. You can then go into your prompt area and change some detail. For this, what we're going to do is we're going to say instead of 20 years old, we'll say 80 years old. Side by side comparison, you can see that it's a perfect replica. This is something that you could absolutely use. You could definitely take this into Photoshop, tweak the, the watch. Um, it's even a fun way to show somebody what they might look like when they get older. The structure reference tool handles those photo real images very, very well, but let's see how it handles a simple line drawing. Keeping the prompt super, super simple, we've included just the keyword a cat to make sure that the image generator knows what we're trying to do with our structure reference. We've also given it some stylistic elements, vibrant colors, psychedelic background and vapor wave. For the first demonstration, we'll be cranking the strength of the structure reference all the way over to the right. That's the maximum strength. The high strength output image is a little too close to the doodle and it looks too much like a line drawing. Yeah, not exactly what we wanted. However, if we lower the strength down to the middle area of the slider, we can see that the AI image generation model has a little bit of freedom to play around. It doesn't always play around in the way that you'd want it to. I mean, in the bottom right there, we've got a very, very basic looking doodle, even worse than the input maybe. But overall, we're starting to see a little bit more detail and visual interest in our cat. If we crank things all the way down to the bottom with our basic line drawing, we can start to see that the image generation model still adheres to the overall lines of our drawing, but isn't so structurally limited in terms of where it can add and apply detail. So if we're trying to use a doodle reference to create something in Adobe Firefly, make sure you're cranking the strength down. If you found this bit of news about Adobe Firefly useful, we've also got a downloadable PDF version. You can find that in the Gumroad link in the description below. It's free. It's so good to see these mainstream AI products from companies like Adobe come to maturity. But the open source community is still so far ahead. And if tapping into the bleeding edge to give yourself an unfair advantage sounds good, you'll want to watch this how to install Stable Diffusion Automatic 11.11 on your local computer.